Hello and welcome to TTP. We'll get John on in a second. Speak of the devil. Hello. How are we doing? Uh, can you do this in the same or not? Has it got me that way? Is that right? Yeah. Well, no, you're, you're sideways. I'm sideways? Yeah. Is that better? That's better. <laughs> Yeah, so a few people have just um, been asking us a few questions, um, mainly about you and your Scottish heritage, to be honest. Um, <laughs> right. So I thought I'd just do a live video, just kind of, people can ask us questions, um, you know, uh, we'll talk about wrestling for a bit, just do a bit of a live stream. Yep. I'm here. Just um, trying it. Yeah, that's just in one possession. Somebody uh, messaged us saying, could you describe the taste of haggis? <laughs> um, heaven. I mean, it's a weird one, isn't it? It's weird. It's quite, it's quite spicy. It's got a few spaces on it. Mm. And just remind people what is actually in haggis, because I don't think people actually realise what is in. <coughs> so, haggis is a Scottish dish. Yeah, so it's it's basically like grown up awful. So it's stuff like hearts, lungs, kidneys. I think maybe a bit of brain, and then that's all like mixed together with spices, like black pepper mainly. Yeah, and then a bit of porridge. And it looks disgusting, but haggis is so beautiful. It tastes really good though. It is. I, had a haggis I don't think pie it looks once. disgusting. It just looks a bit like you had a haggis pie. What's going on, bro? Hello, how are we doing? Yeah. See all my ratings on the side. There's a way to change that. Uh, yeah, mine is. I'm not quite sure. This is our, like, <laughs> this is our first live stream, so we'll, uh, we'll kind of work out the kinks as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are we looking forward to Fastlane? Yeah, love it. It's my favourite pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the worst name, isn't it? Uh, tastes like brain, apparently. I've never had brain to compare <laughs> I can't say I've had, I've had a brain. <laughs> um, but apparently it tastes like brain. I've had it, I have it with, like, like I said... Um, with like a Scottish breakfast. So for anyone who doesn't know what Scottish breakfast is, because I'm not quite sure. I know this, this, um, the little potato, uh, tatty scones. Tatty scone. Yeah. So explain what a Scottish breakfast is. People are intrigued by your Scottish heritage. So it'd be a tatty scone. Which is, uh, which is what? Uh, I think you used to call it a potato cake. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, it's basically potatoes and flour. It's really easy okay. to make. Um, so you got that uh, <laughs> black pudding, mm -hmm. egg standard. Yeah, uh, I think it's usually like a grilled tomato or plum tomatoes. Mm. Uh, square sausage. Of course, because you don't have anything. <laughs> 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 A square sausage is the best invention ever. We why if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. I don't. It don't is understand. broke. Have you tried to? I know you don't cook, Kieran. Do you make <laughs> sausage sandwiches? Well, what's wrong with a sausage? Right, try and make a sausage sandwich. Right. What have you got to do to make a sausage sandwich? You've got to cut what's... it in half. It's really complicated if you can't get it even. Why go through all that if you can just plop on a square sausage and it carefully fits the bread? The Scottish. Um, <laughs> somebody just asked, which is a good shot actually, if, if you think Jimmy Uzo will come back and turn on his brother. It's plausible. Because his brother, you know, he's become a bit of a... <laughs> well, what not to say, but... <laughs> now, originally, so Vince McMahon never used to think that brothers would fight each other. So, you know, when it was like the uh, Bret Hart and Owen Hart thing happened... It never nearly happened because Vince McMahon was like, brothers don't 
wouldn't want to fight each other, they'll love each other. That'll never happen. But obviously it works. There's a lot of like you think of like Undertaker and Kane and mm. all the different bullets had the, the Hardy boys, I think at one point probably have. Yeah, Edging Christian. So I can I can see it happening. Yeah. Would it be that bigger storyline though? I think so because Jay Uzo he needs knock, knocking down a peg or two, doesn't he? If he's going to be really annoying. If he's going to turn on anyone, oh, shit. I, I mean, if you could write WWE, you could do so much. I would do it. They're go, they're trying to be tag team champions, and it's the other who comes out, and Roman doesn't notice, and he turns on Roman. That would be more of an interesting story. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Turning on your twin. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's, he's... It's hard to know their personalities. They're kind of the same thing, aren't they? I, I, I don't know the difference between the two. Cause they're, <laughs> they're same yeah. personality, aren't they? Yeah, sometimes it takes me a minute or two to realise who's Jane, who's Jimmy. They've got separate... Haven't they got the opposite tattoo? That's the way to do it, I think. Yeah. I like the Usos, but, like, you know... <laughs> Who would win in the rest of the match between me and you, John? Hmm. Me? I'm asking me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would your finishing move be? Um, the, I think I'd be a high flyer. I don't think you would be. I wouldn't be a high flyer, no chance. No. <laughs> I'm quite iffy on heights. Yeah, I know. Decorate. Get on the top of the ladder is enough for me. Um, what would make? I think I'd do the boss of Jericho or something on you. I'm quite good at holds. Mm. I could do a four figure leg lock pretty well. Yeah. Which does actually hurt. Yeah. If you do it proper. Uh, that would be interesting. We should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can. Um, well, we've been invited down to. Um, so we interviewed R.P. Davis, the boxer turned wrestler, and he invited us down to his gym, which is located in Blackpool. Um, he's got like a full a full ring there. Maybe we should um, <laughs> test out <laughs> test out this <laughs> theory if he would win. Apparently, you know um, apparently um, they think he would win, John. Well, I'd, I'd pay to see that. It's the Scottish the Scottish are going to fight, you know, aren't they? Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Out of England, Scotland, who kind of wins the most? In what? Is in it wrestling? <laughs> uh, name me an English champion in WWE. What? Pre what? Present? <laughs> or previous? Uh, at any point. <laughs> been any loads. point. Go on, name one. <laughs> kind of, um. Wayne Barrett. Was he a champion? He was Intercontinental Champion. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's from a strong way from Blackpool. He's from Preston. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like it, though, does it? No. It's got a weird accent. Do the ball hammer move from Wayne Barrett. God, I actually love Wayne Barrett. I wish he could come back. I know he's uh, into commentary now, but he was such a good wrestler. Right? Didn't he? And his gimmick. Was it he might be going to. Yeah. Wasn't he going back to NXT? I believe so. Sure, as, um, as, a com as, as a commentary team, I think. Mm. Hey, he can still wrestle, can't he? I think he's injured. Is he? Retired, yeah. Hmm. What was he? What was his gimmick? Bad it news, Barrett. Yeah, he had the he had the. Well, it's not called hammer, but you know, like the the courtroom hammer. He's yeah. A pop up. He actually had. Um, do you remember when he? I was in Manchester and um, doing a raw live show, and he interacted with Wayne Rooney. When I was there. Were you, weren't you there with me? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think that was one. Where was that? Wayne Rooney slapped him one. Yeah. <laughs> That must have been so cool to know. Imagine, like, talking to Wayne Rooney, but, like, prior to that, I said, right, okay, I'm going to come over to you, and then you're going to you're gonna belt me one. 
I just wonder how much to tell them. Um, what's your favourite wrestler uh, intro? My favourite wrestler intro? Uh, I think growing up, it's probably the Gangrel one. Yeah, Gangrel was pretty cool. And everything, the music and everything was cool. Or the, you know, the Hardy Boys were always a good one because you could anything you could imitate when I was younger. Even like uh, DX. Uh, yeah, when it's, yeah. When it's DX, like the, even like the build up with the music, mm. you know, dum dum, it was so good. Um, I mean, Kane's entrance was always pretty cool. When it, there were so many good entrances. I think entrances were the big thing. It's not that big now, and it? it's not really there. There are some good entrances now. I think recently. One of the best ones is like Bray Wyatt's. You know when he was the cult leader. Yeah, yeah. With the fireflies, I was like, yeah, that was so good. Especially good watching, it, live. watching it live as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, What's your favourite Triple H entrance? Is it the one with the Terminator theme? Oh god, that was so <laughs> cheesy on it. That's the most like that's something you would have seen in WCW. So it was the new, it was the new release on the Terminator film, mm. and then the promo was Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, you know, blah blah blah, it's time to play the game, and then he came out in like the, the school helmet. Yeah, it was very very bizarre. Uh, um... <laughs> trying to read sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like? Ran the Orton entrance, burning my light, or the voices entrance. I prefer, I prefer the voices. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say the voices one. I mean, they're both good, aren't they, with Randy Orton? I think but, some people could just come in like anything and it would work. What about Gilbert? <laughs> That was so clever. Goldbergs was a great one. Chris Jericho. I forgot about Chris Jericho. So that was always a good one. It's when he came out in the... When he made his return, and then he came out in the, the jacket. You know, the yeah. neon jacket. Um, I think entrances dev definitely make a good wrestler, don't they? You must like Cesaro, isn't it? Yeah, Cesaro. Which, which when, Cesaro when he pulls entrance. off the... <laughs> Yeah, he's strap a gimmick. <laughs> yeah. I, I love anything. Of, any Cesaro could do anything, and I'd love it. Your wrestling theme, John. What song will you enter to when you have your wrestling match against each other? Hmm. See, I'd kind of go like um, like the classic entrance and have like a, a proper rock kind of uh, song. Wait, what? Um, what? Well, I'm a big fan of Limbiscuit, but Limbiscuit songs have been used about eight, nine times. I like this. I like the way. Do you know Oasis song? Um, I knew you were going to sing Oasis. Are we allowed to swear on this? Uh, I won't no. swear, but it's called Effing in the Bushes. Right. Do you know that song? I don't think that I do. Song, that'd be a good entrance song. How's it go? It's not got any words. It's right. like, uh, it's clips of like um, a documentary. Wow, right, okay. How do you not like Oasis? You're an man. I do, but I don't know that song. Oh, you will. It's what, it's the first, it's usually the song that we play when they, they come on. It's like a little intro. Uh, worst WWE Heavyweight Universal Champion. Well, I, I know straight away the worst champion ever is the Great Khali. Straight off the bat. Is your worst universal one? Probably Goldberg? Yeah. Because he did nothing. <laughs> you think... As... Callie's... He's a gimmick, isn't it? I don't think he's the worst like, champion. Whatever Goldberg did previously in the streak was amazing. But when he got to WWE, his matches were like two minutes. Like, I don't know you what think to of, with him. You think of um, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg... Mm. Just stare, like just stared down for about five minutes, and it was so boring. Nothing I'm happened. To, I'm trying to think of like recent times ones that I've not liked. 
I mean, there'll be ones I've not liked, but I've not been like, oh, they shouldn't be champion. Even like Roman Reigns when he was babyface, you kind of. Uh, I wasn't that big fan of JBL, you know. Why? I just didn't like that that's, gimmick at all. That's I didn't like. quite a statement. But I don't think you were meant to. You're not meant to like him, are you? Mahal. Yeah, that's a good shout. Oh, I like Ginger Mahal. Or Ginger Mahal. As, uh, Did you say Ginger? <laughs> Was it uh, Eva Marie? Eva Marie, yeah. Why do you like JBL? I'm shocked by that. JBL was such a good heel. Yeah, but that's why I don't like him, because he was such a good heel. Yeah, but that's... <laughs> surely when you look back, you must go, actually, he was so good, like... I don't know. I, I, it's not my Because John Cena, I hated him, but it's because he was so good. And he kept... You know what I mean? Yeah. I reckon you should watch back JBL. He is, he is really good. And you hate him for a reason. To be fair, though, I think what it is, is he was champion when I first started watching it again. Because, you know, I was like, in and out. And he was champion, and I was like, what is going on in WWE? What This is not what I remember. So you think... So the time before that would have been, like, the Attitude Era I was watching. Mm. So imagine going out for, a, like, two or three years and come back and it's JBL's champion. Would you not think, like, what what is happening here? I think it's Possibly that. More. It's the first impression of him. Right, Probably okay. Put me off a bit. What's your worst gimmick? Now, we've done an episode about the worst gimmicks, but, I mean, recently... Re recent worst gimmicks? I think mine's probably Tyler Breeze. Do you remember mm -hmm. him? And he was like, was it the fashion police? I quite like that, though. He had the big selfie stick. Oh, the, God, the, fashion police, the fashion police segments were funny, though, weren't they? A Fandango was funny, but Tyler Breeze was... was... You didn't like um, Enzo Amora, did you? No, I didn't. I see, I did. Oh, yeah, he's a better... He's not... I can't stand him as a commentator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... I quite liked his little interview show he has on the network. That was good, to be fair. Who's interview show? Uh, JBL. Do you not remember? He was like, he didn't do, um, like, Eric Bischoff and people were on it. I don't think I remember that. It's good. Some good interviews on it. Um, he interviewed Farouk and stuff. That's a question. Bring one wrestler back in their prime, dead or alive. <laughs> Well, alive, because they wouldn't do much if they were dead, would they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the question is, if you had the power to be uh, yeah, no. alive in the prime. <laughs> uh, oh, no, oh. I would say, I mean, Owen Hart, I think, was taken too soon, you know. Who was that, sorry? Owen Hart. See, I, I think if you gave, gave Owen Hart a few more years, him and like Kurt Angle would have been amazing. Mm. Imagine Owen Hart Kurt Angle. What a dream match that would have been. I'm trying to think who would be good in today's product though. Someone like Randy Savage or... I was a big fan of the British Bulldog growing up. Yeah. Um, there's so many, aren't there? And they're prime. <laughs> Because you could say The Rock, but The Rock coming back now, I still would, I think, would be pretty good. Yeah, he's he's not he's not got out of shape ever. But he, <laughs> he looks I, better now than he, he ever did. I feel like when he comes back, he's he's never that Rock character anymore. He, he he's lost that character, and he can never just go to being The Rock. Mister Perfect. Mister Perfect's a good show. Mm. Uh. Don't think reminds me of Mr. Perfect. I think a lot, a lot of them from the sort of uh, what do they call it? I call it the cartoon era. You know, like the like cartoon the 80s. characters. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of wrestlers there that would were probably at the wrong time. Do you know who I bring back? Um, China. China's good. Show. Imagine China and Charlotte Flair. Yeah. China and Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania would be unbelievable. 
Like, I, I, I say this all the time to you, John, but, like, China was definitely way ahead of the time. She was the only decent woman wrestler at the time, really. You had a copy of, like, I, I was pretty good, weren't you? Mm. Jacker. But a lot of them were just, like... They never, had, they were never allowed... They never allowed good matches, were they? Um, and there was a question there, I've seen. Who would you like to t- tag team with? Who would I like to tag team with? Yeah. Um, who would I like to tag team with? <laughs> Cesaro. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what, would, what would your tag team name be? I love Cesaro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think mine would be McFoley. You know, like when um, like wrestlers come out with a manager who's and the manager's like kind of just showing them off kind of thing. Mm. That's what I would do to Cesaro. Mm-hmm. That's right. um, did you watch the documentary about Ric Flair that's on... Uh, I haven't. No, it's on um, Disney. Uh, Disney Star, isn't it? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. It was ESPN. It was thirty for thirty. It's quite. Um, it doesn't hold back on what it tells you. It's quite. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, it's just how Ric Flair is. He's not very. Um, just how Ric Flair was with his family and stuff. It wasn't the best, to be fair. Right, okay. Somebody, um, sorry, somebody just said China and Ray, and Rhea Ripley. The big big one, wasn't it? Yeah, that'd be insane. Well, I mean, Ric, Ric Flair, he never holds anything back. Like, do you remember the show Swerved? And yeah. Where they, where they prank him. And uh, <laughs> they don't let him into the building. And they say, excuse me, I, I, I need to know your name. And he goes... My name, and he goes famous, and he spells out S A M. And there's like stories where he's been on planes where he's just kind of exposed himself to the the Stuart Stuart esque. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's some of the, them stories in the uh, <laughs> in the documentary as well. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch it. So it's on what oh. Disney Star. Oh, it's fascinating, mate. I mean, he was in a plane crash. Yes, I do not. Spoil it. Broke his back in three places. Wow. And how um, old was he when he broke his back? He was, I'm sure this, I'm going to confuse myself here because I watched the DDP one. I want to say he was 32, something like that. That yeah, may be. And, and he still went on to wrestle when he was like 60 yard. Yeah. <laughs> what a guy. Um, um, speaking of DDP, so I've watched his um, relentless documentary on, on Prime. Hmm. What a documentary! If you can try and watch it, it's, I watched so, it. it's so inspirational. <laughs> it's he's such a nice like obviously because I've watched the resurrection of Jake the Snake as well. That was a good documentary. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's it's, it's amazing what he what he managed to do. I think he was the same. He didn't he break his neck? Uh, it, yeah, yeah, he did. And he, After he, he, buckle. And he was told, like, you'll never wrestle again. So, you know, and he'd only just start wrestling because he started wrestling quite late. Yeah. And, and the fact he... he put all his own money into uh, DDPY, DDP Yoga. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's mad. Favourite belt. Favourite so, belt. So, um, Tom is the uh, 80s IC title. It's a good one. Mine was always the, the big gold belt. There was a WCW. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't like the bell now, do you? No, I liked it when it was like, um, you know, the classic kind of like nine, like what, well, 99. 99 the, the, I like the the winged eagle one that you're talking about. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, that's the one, yeah. I like the hardcore one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always loved that bell. Um, I mean, the 24 7 belt is kind of like the hardcore belt, but it just. It's just not the same, is it, really? It's... I mean, they're trying to be clever with the design because it's meant to look like a clock. But it, for me, it's like... You know when you went to a competition when you were a kid and it's like, design a belt for this and that's what you come <laughs> yeah. up with? It could, it could look so much better than that. It's just not very... But the thing is, as well... Very basic. I think it would have some credibility if 
random stupid people didn't win the belt. Well, the twenty four seven one. Yeah, I quite it's like that. Like, it has like credibility. Like, like what, what's that? What's that big turkey that pops out the egg? Uh, the the the, the gobbledygooker. No, yeah, he yeah. won the he won the twenty four seven belt. How can you have credit when a big mascot turkey wins the belt? Well, there was. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I quite like it. It was the same with the hardcore belt, though. The amount of people that won the hardcore belt when they did the 24 yeah, sticks and stuff. <laughs> they made it a bit more. Well, do you not remember when, um, what do you call them, won it? When somebody was sleeping? Uh, that was Hard uh, Truth, wasn't it? No, the original hardcore belt. Oh, the hardcore. Uh, oh, what's his name? He's one of, like, Vance McMahon's right hand man. Pat Patterson. No, um, the other one. Jeff. No. Uh, <laughs> wait, it's going to come to me now. It's on the back of my song. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, what's his name? But he won it, and he was like, Shh, he was celebrating. He was like, we're doing it really quiet. Oh, there we Gerald go. Besco, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. I liked all that, and they had the uh, they had like a match in a kid's ball pit. Do you remember that? Yeah, but speaking of of Pat Patterson and and like Vince McMahon and that you know that kind of team, <laughs> do you remember when they did the whole gimmick of kiss my ass? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so weird. What's weird fact, about that is what am I getting out of that? <laughs> but the fact is that quite a lot of like big wrestlers performed the kiss William Regal is one of them uh, someone said the, the wrestling story they'd love to know more about was the curse of the Von Erics that should be on the dark side of the ring one about the Von Erics thing yeah there's a new season of that coming out isn't there? As, and does it have the Von Erics on it I know it has um, the Pillman they only announced so many, aren't they? Yes, yeah, Steve Austin's going to be on it. It's his first time being on it. How oh, is it? Mm. Um, what were you saying then? <laughs> About kiss my ass. Oh yeah, the kiss my ass thing. I can you imagine your boss asking you to do that on live <laughs> TV? <laughs> I just feel like no. And it's on like live TV across, like he thought, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Yeah, no. It's like getting a stink face from Rikishi. I wouldn't want that either. Mm. Yeah, but it's worse when it's Vince McMahon. Let's look <laughs> him in the eye. And it's his bare ass as well. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> god almighty! Crazy the stuff he used to do. What about when X Pac did his uh, X Factor move? And then he he busted his like crack. Oh, what, what's the actual term though? It's not that, is that? It's gooch. Yeah, then he rip it. He ripped it and like it was bleeding in his like in his pants. Um, talking of Regal, him and Tajira partnership was so funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love to Jerry. I know you always say that. He's so funny. And do you know, <laughs> do you know what else I was watching the other day? I was watching. Um, <laughs> I was watching. Um, God, I got my, my mind's gone blank now. Uh, Funaki. Yeah, I you know where they do the like the badly dubbed kind of um, subtitles indeed um, yeah and i just i forgot how funny that like them two were together um i mean you don't that is what's missing a little bit you don't get them kind of characters here the last i kind of remember was kevin owens and chris jericho yeah you, you made the list that was that was so funny ah that was so good and it, calling the the interview with the wrong name all the time and stuff like that <laughs> that was great yeah. Uh, it was okay when Mickey James did the Bronco Buster, though. It was the Bronco Buster you're thinking of. 
What did you call it? The oh, no, the, no, the X Factor is where he, uh, it's like um, he slams him down in between the legs. Yeah, no, it was a Bronco Buster he did on the Tom. Yeah, yeah. Then I, it I, go, then uh, oh, that's what it was. This is going to be graphic now. The exposed turnbuckle went up inside him. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I watched an interview and he said, like, his whole pants were just so cold because of the blood filling up. Uh, he finished the match, though. <laughs> I know. What a hero. <laughs> Some people do. Cesaro, yeah, again, with the teeth injury. That's the, yeah. It's probably the worst injury of, like... In recent um, years, I've seen. Sid Vicious was a bad one. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even watch that one properly. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty horrible, isn't it? It's, it's, just flop just was... it's flopping around. Well, um, Anderson, Anderson Silva did it in UFC like years ago, a few years ago. And he, he kicked the guy's shin and his leg just went and flopped around. Oh. It was horrible. What's your favourite? Type of match to watch. Favorite type of match to watch. Um, Royal Rumble. I mean, you, you, yeah, Royal Rumble, obviously. Yeah. Eliminate. Well, Elimination Chamber was good, wasn't it? This year, yeah, the um, Elimination Chamber was really good because in recent years it's been a bit, you know, flat. Yeah. But I think this this year it was really good. They kind of used all the elements of it. I mean, I kind of knew what was going to happen once. Daniel Bryan had won, mm. but I wasn't disappointed with it because it made sense. Yeah, and the thing that I like about um, the pay per view was it was <laughs> quality over quantity because normally you have like so many matches. Yeah, you don't really have time. It, doesn't, it doesn't seem like you have time to kind of fill it up. But, you know, I think I mean Cesaro looks as if he's getting a little bit of a push. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a pretty good match, didn't he? He's there, isn't he? <laughs> he, yeah. had a, he had a decent enough uh, match. He did. And he's, what, I mean, what a hero. See when he was climbing on the on the cage when he pulled up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's getting all his tricks in, wasn't he? One of my favourite yeah. matches um, is a Hell in a Cell. <laughs> and I think 21 years ago, yesterday, was in, um, uh, yeah. Triple H and Catches Jack in the Hell in a Cell. Which is an unbelievable Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I remember um, that would be the first Hell in a Cell I watched live. And that's so, another thing that wrestling are missing out on now is them huge promos. Yeah, they don't seem to do them. Like, I mean, one that springs to mind is um, HBK and the only, um, HB, sorry, HBK and Triple H. I think it was I, SummerSlam. And there's a huge build-up, you know, in the promo. And... I think as well, though, with Hell in a Cell, it's kind of lost its novelty because it's on every year. Where, if I remember rightly at that time, it hadn't been used for so many years, like three or four years. Mm. So it was such a big of a thing that they were going to be using it, um, which made it more of a thing to watch. How that's, do you feel? I've spoke about that match. That's the match where my mate the next day was like, you know they use like fake fire? It does it's not hot. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not really like and uh he's saying like the ring was padded for him falling through and stuff. Like, People always try to put down wrestling it's stupid, aren't they? Fake fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about um the red Hell in a Cell cage? Hmm. Well, it used, then, do you remember when the steel cages used to be blue? Yeah, that's going back, like, uh, 80s, and, and then it went to, like... Uh, it wasn't the 90s as well. Was it? It must be in the early 90s, then. I'm sure if you watch, like, you know the Valentine's Day Massacre when Big Show first came in? I'm sure yeah. that cage is blue. Uh, I don't mind it, as long as you can see what's going on. There's quite a lot of things coming through now. Yeah, the um, Rock and um, Brock promo. But, like, these promos had, like, sort of the theme song for the pay-per-view. The promo used to be the full song. Yeah. Now... They, they would get you pumped up for it, wouldn't they? Definitely. Yeah. I remember watching the Armageddon once, and just the intro to that, they showed, like, an atomic bomb going on. But, like, yeah. it was all the all the different wrestlers talking about their matches. 
get, just get when you're staying up at like one in the morning when you've got school the next day it would definitely keep you awake yeah because if there's any americans watching this like you probably watch a heavy view at like six seven eight o'clock at night when for us brits it's we have to you know fully invest in the pay per view stay up to one o'clock did the elimination chamber start early this year uh, the pre-show so was started, yeah, 11, started yeah. 12, I think. Yeah, it's normally 12. pre-show is 12, and it yeah. starts at 1, so it was an hour earlier. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, there don't seem to be the build-ups like there used to be. Now, I said this the other day as well, which I, I don't think you remember, but at the end of the pay-per-view, they used to do like a recap of all the matches. Yeah. Um... Yeah, again, we don't do that. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it suddenly stopped. I think, is it because it's on the network and if you want to see the matches, you just rewind? Yeah, why not just do a recap of like the whole event? I just don't understand why they just don't do it anymore. It just... I don't know. Well, I mean, <clears throat> talking to WCW, WCW, what they used to do is give you a recap on Nitro. On yeah. the night before, so you, just in case you didn't see the pay per view, you kind of knew what was going to be happening in that show. They don't really do that on Raw or that, do they? They don't. They say what's happened, but they don't give you like a full. It used to be like pictures of it, and but the commentary. I think instead of the pre-show, they should bring back Heat. Yeah, I used to love Heat. Heat, Heat was so good. I mean, Heat used to be on Channel Four as well, which yeah. was like. Um, I always remember that because in school, like, obviously, with Channel Blue 4, it was on, like, during T4 or whatever. So there'd be, like, people who don't watch wrestling would watch it to see what everyone's talking about. Because normally it was on Sky, and if you're not Sky, you don't know kind of what's going on. So people would watch it and go, oh, yeah, I watched it yesterday. And, I'm, you know, I don't get it. <laughs> or they'd be like, I was really good. Like, I seen him fighting him or whatever. Back in the days when it was like seen as real. Oh, I didn't know that. So AEW would give you um, a recap before the show. Uh, AEW oh, does have a vibe of like WCW to me. Mm. So Speaking works, of and... AEW, mm. the big show, what do you reckon? Well, initially I thought he was just going as a commentator, but apparently he's wrestling. I think he's still got years in him to wrestle. And he is a good wrestler. If you say so. <laughs> I think he's a, he does what he does, doesn't he? He's a couple moves and that's him. No, no, he isn't. Don't put down the big show like that. Name me five big show moves. <laughs> he has an arsenal of moves. The chop. Yeah. The choke slam. Yeah. The punch. Close well, line. He's too tall. He's seven feet. Have you seen close line? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but Big Show is more than just like, isn't it, you know, he's not like a free move wrestler. I think that's a bit unfair. I've asked you a name five and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> of, course he has, of course he has more than five moves. Which are... <laughs> Get on the pressure, Kieran. Can't do it. I'm not having this. I'm not having you <laughs> slate the picture. No, he probably has four. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, I've seen that. He could be the first wrestler to win the WCW, ECW, WWE, and the AEW title. Yeah, that'd be that's a proper grand slam, isn't it? Yeah, but I think he's good for AEW, and I hope with him going to AEW that it'll give WWE a kick up the arse yeah it's that competition AEW's got so much promise but it's just not they started off so well I was excited I was watching it and it took me back to the glory days of WCW thinking this is it there's real competition and then like a couple of months in you're just like what am I watching this is not make have you sense. seen um, Pac in AEW which used to be Neville. 
<laughs> uh, sorry, someone's put has Orton got five moves. They used to call him the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and look at him now. Well, yeah. So I think you should apologise on behalf of Big yeah. Show. Uh, yeah, Neville's called Park. Yeah, he is. He is insane. I love watching Park. Mm. And even like Dean, Dean Ambrose, they have got some good wrestlers over there. Dean Ambrose was like one of my favourite wrestlers. I was gutted when he went. Yeah, and I was shocked that he, he went. Um, I mean, I like Cody Rhodes. I like Cody Rhodes as uh, what was he called? Stardust. No, you didn't. I did. Well, to be fair, no, I you did. See them like, we, we, Right, well, that's one of the best matches I've seen live, like, going to see live, was Goldust against Stardust. Yeah, right, fair enough, right? I'll give you that. But I liked Stardust for, like, a month or so, and then I was like, oh, it's Stardust. It's a, it, I liked I mean? it. It was, you know me, I like quirky things. It was quite quirky. Yeah, but it was, it, it was kind of a bit embarrassing, Stardust. <laughs> uh, is that... Romeo the voice. I'll be 36 tomorrow. I'll be birthday. And what are you going to do for your 36th birthday? Because if you're in the UK, I suppose you're still on a lockdown. Yeah. You start wrestling. That's when DDP started. What? Well, start wrestling? Yeah, you start wrestling at 36. Don't at 36, it? yeah. It's never too late. <laughs> I've still got time. <laughs> keep yeah, keep keep uh, saying that to yourself, John. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wish EW was better. God, imagine actually started wrestling at thirty six. Like, I get up out of bed and I'm knackered. <laughs> <laughs> just mad, isn't it? Well, you say he started wrestling. He was always a manager or something. When he was in wrestling, he just wasn't mm. wrestling. Um, yeah. I suppose he's a bit fitter than I am as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, quirky. Try Dan House and what a captivating wrestler with gimmicks galore. That sounds like your type of thing, doesn't it? I'll have a look at that. <laughs> I'll tell you, one of my favourite gimmicks in recent years was Miz Down. Yeah, that's one of he the best. He was ones. so funny. Uh, and they released him. I know. Rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I watch NXT UK more than NXT. Um, NXT UK is so... is I think NXT UK is better than NXT. You have so many good wrestlers. Uh, he's with Ring of Honor, this guy. I'll have to have a look. Um, I watch NXT and NXT UK, but not like avidly. I need to start watching it more. So NXT UK is on every Thursday, and it's only about an hour. Um, but is it not Wednesday? Or is it N no. NXT UK is Thursday. Thursday, yeah, on the network. NXT like, it's only an Thursday. hour, mm. but um, it's just, yeah, it's just it's such good wrestling. I mean, British wrestling's getting pretty good, isn't it? There's a British lot out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of wrestling out there to watch, though, isn't there? Oh, so he managed um, Scott Hall. And yeah, he was the Diamond Stud, yeah. Uh, back in the good old days. <laughs> I didn't like DDP when he came to WWE, though. What, when he was, so he was recording Sarah, weren't he? Um, he, was, he was stalking it. It just didn't work for me, that. I don't know why they did that. And he pulls off the bar cloth and it's like, it was me. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, I think that's when he was American Bias as well. Take care. Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know I, I don't know why they did that to DDP, though. They could have just brought him in as we know, know him. It just doesn't make any sense. Vince. Hmm. Brought in like Buff Bagwell as he was though. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Uh, don't uh, do, do, do. don't you think none of the WCW guys done well in WWE? 
I'm so disappointed with w, WCW guys. The only one that done well was Booker T. I, I absolutely loved Rhino when he came in. He was, he, he was, was for well, ECW though. Was he was he was he WCW as well? No, he was ECW. Oh, I thought he was WCW as well. Uh, Rey Mysterio did well. Yeah, massive fan of Rey Mysterio. Is Rey Mysterio still blind in one eye? Is that like a, is that no. sort of thing? <laughs> it, it's grown back. <laughs> What do you mean they've it's gone of, back? They kind of cut that storyline. They had a storyline with him, didn't they? Yeah. Kind of disappeared. So he's got two functioning eyes now, has yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like um, when Rusev, um, Rusev changed nationality, didn't he? Yeah. What was he? Was it? What was he to begin with? Uh, Romeo, the voices from the USA. Howdy. Are you watching from America then? Uh, what did you say? Rusev, what he changed nationality. Oh, Rusev is in AEW as well. So it's from you. So, um, where that's in USA are you from? And I wonder what his um, opinion was on the non-Americans were. <laughs> Do you who were the non-Americans? I think they were. So it was William Regal. Christian, who was Canadian, and who else was it? Mm. I think it's going back now. I can't remember. I miss Rusev, love Lana though. <laughs> Are you from Tennessee? From Tennessee, state of Jack Daniels. Yeah, Eddie Benoit and Jericho came from WCW. Yeah, however, I'm thinking what, when, when you that question's asked, you mean once WWF bought WCW, the people that came over, none of them did any good. The likes of like Guerrero, Benoit, Jericho did well because they moved. They left a sinking ship, didn't they really? Goldberg, I never, didn't really do it. Sting? Sting came too late. <laughs> They've been trying to get Sting for years. Sting was so good. Yeah, you're a massive fan of Sting, aren't you? Yeah, it was, just, it was the best one. Honestly, Sting was amazing. To be fair, yeah. though, when he did come into WWE, it was like a huge OMG moment because you never mm. thought he was going to come over. I still can't believe they had them lose as well at WrestleMania. <laughs> He's talked like all the time. <laughs> Do you guys remember William Regal? <laughs> Do we? <laughs> yeah. So, um, William well, Regal's from Blackpool, where we're yeah, from. Yeah, which, which is where we're from. Um, he, he possibly used to be my neighbour. <laughs> In his book, he refers to a chippy he used to work at, I think, on Central Drive. Which well, is... He used to work in a washing machine shop. Yeah. So, which was on Central Drive. I used, mom, mom and dad used to run a chippy on Central Drive. When NXT UK came to Blackpool, um, he was in one of the clubs, weren't he, in Soul Suite. Uh, yeah. He talks about the Tangerine Club as well in these book. Yeah. I think he was a doorman. Uh, Jacob Perks, WAW Zone. Hey guys, how you doing? We're doing very well. Well, I am. I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm not like stretching my neck. Some of the writing's on the side, so I have to read things. Yeah, so this is our first um, live stream. So we've had a few questions um, coming off some people, so we thought... We'll just do a live stream and people can uh, ask away and uh, find out about John's Scottish heritage, which was we found people are very intrigued by. You keep bringing it up. I mean, I've never lived in Scotland, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's yeah, Scottish, but he never lived in Scotland. Yeah, I've got the accent, but like, my mum and dad are Scottish. My whole family's Scottish. It's just, I've never lived there. But, but I've got the accent. He, and then you lived in Spain for a couple of years. Ten years. Ten years, yeah. And then, for some reason, moved back to Blackpool. <laughs> Why? Why did, why did you do that? <laughs> uh, well, I did it to learn how to cook. <laughs> I went to Caton College in Blackpool, and then my plan was to only go for two years. But I'm still here. 
yeah, there you go. Went to the famous Blackpool Tower. As did I. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you say that. <laughs> What do you mean? I was just used to see you wandering around a lot, Kieran. <laughs> I was um, jack of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> Master of none. <clears throat> any any more interviews lined up? Uh, whereabouts in Spain? Uh, Mallorca. Mallorca. So did you work, you worked in Maglov, didn't you? Yeah. Doing the, doing the bars? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a total Brit, you went to Magaluf and worked. Well, that's the only place you can work if you live over there, really. Surely not. Until you get in. Well, no, I mean, at the age I was, I was being a bar at like 16. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a good question for you, John, and for everyone else. So I'm getting married this year, which means I'm going to have a stag party of a, of a bachel bachelorette party. Mm -hmm. Um who do you reckon we should dress up as? Because we, we're going to dress up as wrestlers for one um, one of the nights. Yeah. Um, so, who, who are you dressing up as? Uh, I don't think you can see it. He's up there. Oh, I've got two masks there. That one. Do you want to dress up as Kane? Yeah, you know me. I like to make costumes, so I'm going to try and make a Kane gonna, costume. Are you going to make the whole, like, one, like, the whole one suit? The all in one suit? No. Because <laughs> I'm no doubt going to need the toilet at some point during that night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it'll be like a two part. It'll, it'll look like it's one. I'm quite good at that. Wh which one, which half are you going for though? I'm going for the attitude cane. My favourite cane. Well, okay. When he wore that mask. Yeah. I didn't like it when he had like the that missing or the speed, the robotic voice. I may, I'm, I may get a robotic voice thing. Oh god! I, 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 you know, I completely Two forgot that even happened. Longer, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as worse when Bubba Ray had the uh, stutter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what other costumes have I made? Who's You've made quite a few, haven't you? I made mankind. So me, yeah. Kevin, and our friend Callum went to a Comic Con in Blackpool, and we all went as the three faces of Fowler, and mm -hmm. I made everyone's costume. Yeah, and we um, got a shout out from Mick Fowler. Yeah, so he was on the actual panel. He was there with Mick Foley, uh, Al Snow, Booker T. T, Charvo, and Kevin Nash. <laughs> Kevin Nash, yeah. <laughs> and my so my wrestling boots were these big, tall, white wrestling boots. But I can only get them in like a size six or what I think it was. So my toes are like scrunched up all all day. Oh, uh, that mask. Right. So to make it look like it'd been pinned in, they're actually like um what do you call them? Clips? They're like butterfly clips. Right. Gold they use them in paper. And But they were they were the end of, I kept the mask on all day, I didn't take it off at all. At the end of the day, I had imprints of them all along my head. It was um, so what painful. was the mask made out of? <laughs> so, it was, from what I can remember, I bought like... You can remember. You know the white masks you buy? I bought one of them from Works, and then I cut it into the shape I needed. Yeah, keep going. And then I went to various charity shops, and I bought leather handbags. <laughs> can can um, you go and get it? Can you What's bring that? it down? Yeah, yeah, bring it closer, go and get it. Oh, hold on. <laughs> it's only a little mannequin in it. So... It's actually quite detailed. So, John, does that mean that you went into a charity shop buying handbags by yourself? Yeah. And what did, what did people think when you bought handbags? Uh, I, I mean, she, she went, oh, who's this for? And I was like, it's for me. <laughs> 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 so that's the insane so look how painful that would be to wear it how long were we at the comic con for like 8 hours yeah it was, yeah, it was a long time oh, it was we so hot as well seen, we've seen Vern Troyer do you remember Vern Troyer <laughs> oh it's the saddest thing I've ever seen he was sat in a bucket 
it's, he, was it's, a, he, was, he was sat in a bucket. And like, so Glenn Troyer is, is small, but when you see him in person, he's so much more small than you would ever think. Yeah. And there, there was no one queuing up for him, bless him. Oh, it's bless so me, sad. <laughs> I can't, I just can't believe they put him on a bucket. Why didn't they get him like a seat? It's, it's not. Kieran, it's not funny, mate. It's, it's, not, it's not funny. That's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I quite like that, though. It was fun doing that at Comic Con, wasn't it? It was, yeah. My Cactus Jack one was a belter. Mm. So I, went as, I went as Dude Love. You went as. Um, like Mick Foley and Callum Winters catches Jack. Oh, it's mankind. Mm. I even made the Mr. Sokol. I don't know where he is. <laughs> that was really hard to make, Mr. Sokol. Why? You should throw a sock. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who, who are you going to go as? I don't think you should pick if you're a stag. No, because imagine who I'd get. Who? I'd get like uh, the Shockmaster or something. Oh, that'd be so funny. <laughs> I'd love to see the. Sh I, I don't think he's alive though, is he? I'd love to see the Shockmaster in the Royal Rumble and fall in on his way in. It'd be so <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, is Mick Foley the biggest wrestler you've met? Well, probably on that day we met, like, like I say, we met Mick Foley, Al Snow, Kevin Nash, Booker T, Charo. His missus was there as well, Booker T's missus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, probably, yeah. Apart from who we've had on here, I'd say Zach Knight's pretty big. Yeah. Well, he is in Britain, I don't know if he is. I mean, he's fairly, he had a film made but about it, his life. If you've seen um, Fighting With My Family with The Rock and, and you know, the, the Knight family, we interviewed um, Paige's brother, uh, who's mm. a wrestler, promoter, um, and he's, he's really big in England, and he's, he's doing amazing things for British wrestling. He, he's really well known, isn't he, amongst other wrestling companies in England as well. He's quite territorial still over here. Yeah. What WWE wrestler? Oh wait, yeah. What WWE wrestler would you love to interview? Ric Flair is he's got to have some stories. Yeah, but do you know what, actually who I'd love to interview? Um, like a a referee. Referee like Earl Hebner. Yeah. Ask him what uh, if he can get any cheap t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know that story? He got sacked for selling it's, it's, merchandise or something. It's in the stadium. I take it wrestlers don't get paid very much. I don't know. I mean, that was such... I don't know if... Do you know the storyline of how the two twins came to be wrestlers? Mm, don't think so. So the storyline was... So it was Hulk Hogan against the... Mil I think it was Million Dollar Man. I'm not positive on that. But... The storyline was that they put a fake referee in and the million dollar man had paid for somebody to get plastic surgery to look like the referee it was meant to be. Right. So that's why they were twins. So like it made it look like he'd got somebody to look like him. It was a while ago. Uh, yeah, the Shockmaster was Tugboat and another guys. When he called the Shark in WCW as well. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, Shockmaster. This is... <laughs> It's one of my favourite clips. Uh, do you watch the Stone Cold interviews? Yes. Love the Stone Cold interviews. Yeah. One of my favourite ones was um, um, Mark Henry. I've not watched that yet. Oh, it's really good. Cause just because, like, Mark Henry is such a nice guy and the stories he has, um, it, it's a really good interview. You need to watch it, John. Have you watched the one with Bailey? I have, yeah. I like that. I quite like Bailey though. She's yeah, I do. She's a proper fan, isn't she? And mm. she's, I think she's good. Um, that was I'd like to interview Vince McMahon. 
But I don't think he would give anything. I don't think, like, if you ask him a question, I don't think he would give a proper answer. Do you know what he used to? Like, I'm a, like we spoke about Tech Talk going on it. I see all these wrestling clips. And there's old clips of Vince McMahon being on, like, talk shows about wrestling. And and he's obviously not got, like, a PR guy with him. And he's just saying it how it is. Right. Um, I don't know yet. It is what it is, isn't it? I I, he doesn't have to hate the fact of what wrestling is anymore, so he might be quite open. Uh, who was your favourite diva? Or favourite divas? Um... Lita was mine growing up. Yes, yeah, so if you want for nineties, like I should have it, China or Lita. Um, as I hate to admit it, but Charlotte Flair, like I love her. She's 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 annoying in a. Why? Car. I don't think she's annoying. She's a little bit, but she's, she's like a dad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like Charlotte Flair. But she probably is one of the better wrestlers. I mean, women wrestlers now, there's so many good ones. I like Sasha Banks, Bailey. Shayna, um, Shayna Blazer. I don't like Shayna Blazer. Do you know, I, I love her. I think she's doing good. And she looks like she would kick you. Oscar. Off. Oscar's one of the best ones. Mm. Um, Bianca Belair, I like. I like Rhea Ripley. There's so many now, it's amazing. Mm. Uh, Nata, someone said Nata. I, I, I like Natalia, Natali. I don't like Nata and Jax. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started on that. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about Mickey James. Someone said Mickey James, but... Uh, do you watch The Table for Free on the network? I quite like that. Yeah, you, yeah, you like that, don't you? That's one of my favourites, because you get real good stories out of that one. Mm. I like the... Um... <sighs> What's the the cartoon one with the with the stories on? Yeah, uh, story time. Story time, yeah, that's really funny. Uh, current cop. She she right yeah yeah I like her as well. She's in it but not in it. Do you know how they're on about Kieran? Yeah, she's. She was Oscar's tag team partner, wasn't she? Yeah, but she's not made a debut that was she. Yeah, she went away. I'm sure she went to wrestle in Japan, but then... She's coming back, I think, because I know okay. she got promoted, like, the other week. I think that's her, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, who else do I like? Even in NXT, there's so many. Um, even in NXT UK as well, there's a wrestler called Viper. She's really good. Mm. It was someone we we seen one, didn't we, in um, Winter Gardens. And she, I'm sure she's on NXT UK. Do you remember? Uh, what time was that? When was that? Is that when we saw Scotty Too Hotty? Yeah. Who, who was that we were seeing? I can't remember. Oh, what? No. Shia is current champion. On what? Do you like Kaylee Ray? Kay Kaylee Ray. I do. Yeah. She, she, yeah, she's in NXT. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said, "Why not get you started on Naya?" <laughs> she's just dangerous. She's injured so many wrestlers. It's, My whole. I just don't know why she gets away with it. Anyone else would be told to go, or get sent to NXT. Do you remember Eva Marie? She was making a lot of mistakes and sent her back down to NXT to sort of mm. sort her act out. Why is Nia Jax not getting it? Because she's cousins with The Rock. <laughs> like, what's going on? Why do you like her, Kieran? I don't understand that. I like well, I, I do like her. Um, yeah. Why? I like her more because you don't like her and it, it's just... Oh, she's the current NXT champion. Women's champion. I haven't watched it for a couple of weeks. I don't know when she got made champion. <laughs> Someone said family dot dot dot. I think that's why she kind of gets away with it though. Um, NXT is better wrestling. Mm. I, yeah. 
I would say, if we said this, I said this on the interview, who did I say this to? Where I said NXT should be its own brand. I said, uh, you do well in NXT and then you get put in like Raw or SmackDown. I think you should just stay in NXT and make NXT like amazing. Like, it's, it's, it's a whole singular brand. And then just have one pay-per-view where all three brands are against each other. Yeah. Because that, that, um, that's what you want. I, know that, I get that's what you want. Like, somebody doing well in NXT. So, like, I don't know. I can't think of anyone. But I remember back in the day, you wanted Finn Balor to come and wrestle someone that was on the main roster. But just mm. do that once a year, maybe even at WrestleMania. Yeah. Why have you got to do it? Because they never did. No one that comes up from NXT does well. I don't know why. There's only a few that you can name. Like, yeah. well, like I said, they did it with Survivor Series. It was NXT, Raw, and SmackDown. But why not do it at WrestleMania? Why not like go right? I'm going to challenge you. Or the NXT giving it the bigger and be like, here you go. There you go. Nijax is um, stiff and dangerous. <laughs> yeah. My hole. Correct. <laughs> uh, they did a thing, Worlds Collide. Yeah. I mean, I know they've done ones, but... Uh, they need another training brand. Yeah. Well, have you seen this, this new one? It's NXT um, Evolve, I believe. No. Um, so it's like a purple kind of logo. Mm. And it's another brand, I believe. Do you remember uh, 420 or whatever it was called? 205 Live. That's it. What am I saying? <laughs> 205 Live. Is that even so long? Yeah, I think, yeah, there is. But there's a guy that, that wrestled on there called um, Perkins, TJ Perkins. Yeah. And he was so good. What happened to him? I don't know. I think he's still on 205 Live. They sent Enzo Moro there, didn't they? And then it really yeah. worked out. Um, how's this gone then, this live stream, John? I think it's gone all right. Yeah. We haven't run out have... of things to say. Yeah, I think we should do it again. Uh, again soon. Hmm. Um, I think we're going to wrap up. Uh, it's quite quick. Um, yeah, I know. Of time. I know, yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, we've just had a um, an email off YouTube. <laughs> Haven't we, John? Do you want to tell the story? Yeah. Uh, so the email, yeah, every so often when you hit certain landmarks. So because we've gone past the 500 mark, they've uh, sent us a email to congratulate us. I was in Ring of Honor. TJ Perkins. Oh, is it? I don't watch Ring of Honor. It sounds no, like there's a few good on it. Yeah. It's a lot of wrestling to watch, isn't there? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we've hit over 500 subscribers on YouTube. Um, so feel free to check us check out our YouTube channel. Um, John, do you want to say our new uh, URL? It's uh, youtube.com slash turnbuckle talk podcast. There you go, yeah. Nice so, we've got loads of videos on there. So, we do um, a turnbuckle talk episode, but then we also do a thing called tea talk, turnbuckle tea talk, which is just like half an hour of us just kind of talking about whatever comes to mind, really. Sometimes it's about wrestling, sometimes it's not. There's always a mention of wrestling, isn't there? Yeah. But it's kind of just like a sideshow on top of the podcast, just where we talk about life. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for watching, um, and mm. we'll hopefully do this live uh, stream again. Um, so goodbye from me, John. <laughs> uh, goodbye from me, Kieran. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> thank you. See ya. Bye.